Okay, back with 50 and 50. Um, to, huge thanks to Romenko, Progen and Edx for the support and helping me put together 50 vlogs in 50 days and a huge range of animal health uh, issues in ruminant animals. Um, I'm going to talk today about AMR, antimicrobial resistance and antibiotic resistance. It's a subject I've talked a lot about over the last few years, one I've taught a lot about and seen um, farm programs in improving animal health and reducing antibiotics and the need to do this. And I suppose right now we're in a focus of um, making sure supply chains work, that we have safe, healthy food, that it's on people's tables. And that's key priority. And I suppose AMR is something that is not going away as a challenge. It is a huge issue. And I'll talk a little bit about why it's such a big issue for farmers particularly to focus on um, and continue to focus on. It's an issue in human medicine. It's a hu an issue in animal medicine. And I suppose the idea of One Health is that animals, humans, and the environment are so closely linked together. We're all tied together from a nutritional point of view, from the farming systems affecting, uh, particularly if we're using antibiotics in animals, how that might affect humans. Um, and you know, I think there's positives to this uh, as well as negatives. So we need to be very mindful of the One Health concept, because I think it's gonna come to the fore, and I'll talk a little bit about that uh, after, over the coming years. Um, I, I think it is a huge issue, uh, antibi antibiotic resistance, because some of the key things to remember is we've had no new antibiotics developed since the late 1980s. Um, antibiotics have said to add 10 years to our lifespan, they're vital medicines. And if they stop working, uh, well let's just pick it in humans, there was predictions done by uh, Lord Jim O'Neill that 10 million people a year could die from um, resistant bacterial infections. So these, what happens with AMR is if you're treating uh, bacteria with antibiotics, we're killing them. Um, and what happens over time is these bacteria are smart. They develop small changes in their DNA to a number of uh, mechanisms which allow them to become resistant to the effective mechanisms that the antibiotics use to kill them. And we've developed these resistant bacteria populations. And that's a real challenge in humans, as we said, like 10 million people predicted by 2050 on current trajectories. But it's also an issue um, for animal medicine because um, we don't want to cause any issues with human. That's the main driver, that we don't want resistant populations of uh, resistant bacteria developing in our animal populations that could affect humans, but also for our animals ourselves, we, you know, antibiotics are still vital tools in our farming systems. So we want to slow down this and we want to save these precious resources, which are antibiotics. And we want to use as much as necessary, but as little as possible. So this is an issue. And one key thing I really want to remind farmers, particularly in Ireland, is that our legislation changes are coming at a European level. By 2022, we're going to have new legislation around the prescription and prescribing of an antibiotics that is going to influence how we use antibiotics in our farms. And that's, that's January 2022 that that'll come into effect. And you know, particularly some of the key things is prophylaxis or metaphylaxis, where we're using antibiotics on uh, group treatments of animals to prevent disease. Uh, and like, for example, I, I've seen it on farm and I've talked about it in previous videos in dairy to beef systems, where we're buying in calves, we give them all a shot of antibiotics to cover um, the risk of infection. Uh, if you look at it in dairy farms, you're seeing selective dry cow therapy. If we look at it uh, in, in, in flock systems, an example is watery mouth in lambs, giving every uh, uh, lamb a, a dose of antibiotics to prevent watery mouth. There's going to be a move away from that type of prophylactic treatment. And we're also going to be looking at an issue where critically important antibiotics. These are antibiotics that we use in animal medicine and human medicine. So these must be prioritized for human medicine and they'll be removed. And a lot of countries have removed these medicines from, uh, tr from animal treatments on farms. And you look at the fluoroquinolones, the third and fourth generation cephalosporins are key medicines there. And often when I would do farmer talks and I mention some of these products, there is that step back with well, how, how would you farm without such and such a drug? And we can do it, but these are gonna be coming out of our system and we need to be very mindful of that. So we need to reduce our usage and it can be done, I've seen it in pharma and I think it's not about removing antibiotics completely, it's being a little bit more, um, putting a little bit more thought into it. And, I, and I've done lots of discussions and talks about AMR to farmers and at an industry level we've discussed it. And it, it's been interesting because I think the, one of the big things coming, if we know legislation is coming, the biggest change is around mindset. Uh, and if you look at mindset, it's our outlook, our attitude towards something. and. Antibiotics have been a fantastic tool over uh, you know, the last 20, 30, 40 years in farming systems where we had sick animals and we treated them with antibiotics and they worked. And we now need to move away from the idea that antibiotics are there as a crutch uh, to back up um, you know, where we could be better in husbandry and management. So 
the mindset has to change first around antibiotics. The mindset has to change. The legislation change is coming, and it's really moving from prevention, from cure to prevention. And really, I've been talking about preventative medicine for a long time. And it's there's lots of re there's lots of aspects to preventative medicine. But I'm going to give an example here. So of course, people will be laughing. I like to 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 you know <laughs> push myself with ideas. So okay, uh, mindset. Okay, let's just very quickly. Mindset. We've we've a couple of op options here. I think two options. We can either do the ostrich, put the head in the sand, don't don't see what's coming ahead, or be like the eagle, soar above it, see where, get a full view of what's potentially ahead of us. So really, to me, uh, the eagle is the you know that vision, that vision ahead. Uh, the ostrich is the head in the sand. So that's what I think about mindset. That we have to approach this. That this is coming in your farming systems. How can we adapt and get better? It's not anything to be afraid of. When you adapt prevention over cure, it's a more profitable way of farming. Um, uh, and just be mindful that we're not removing antibiotics, but we're just using them uh, more, uh, I suppose, that there's a word there, and it's um, more prudent use of antibiotics. That was the word that took me a while to think about. Anyway, okay, so mindset's really important. So what I will say is the legislation's changing. We need to change our mindsets, and that's happening on farm. And it, 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 there's two options. This can occur uh, through education and d discussion, or look, someday you're going to go and you're going to have see new changes around what medicines you can use. But if I look at any system, and I look at a beef system, this is an example of a beef system we worked on. And very simple, the first thing we did was we have to mine the data. The data is very straightforward in ways if you can take it out of the farm, you can absolutely see the overall usage, you can see where the usage is. So what are anim what animals, what age group, and what medicines are they getting? And on a, on a beef farm we worked on, um, they were using a lot of critically important antibiotics where they probably didn't need to use them. So that was one thing. So we, we, we looked at removing them completely, and the farm didn't fall apart. And we also looked at the data that showed that there was a couple of key areas for it. Retain cleanings in cows after calving. And in a beef, this is a beef farm system, so you've your yearly system housing. Calf pneumonia and scour uh, in the early days got a little bit of treatments. Fowls indoors were getting uh, some, some antibiotic treatments. And weaning, particularly weaning time. And this is a really simple example. But beef farms and sheep farms and dairy farms, we have the opportunity because we are in pastoral systems to really reduce our usage. Uh, there is challenges within that system, but we can really look at it. So we, we focused in on weaning pneumonia, and we looked at vaccination, we looked at housing, we looked at issues around parasite control, particularly lungworm at this time of year, and there was we, we got a massive reduction in antibiotic usage and improvement. And if you think about pneumonia as an infectious agent damaging the lungs, it's more profitable to take this approach. Uh, prevention uh, is actually a very cost-effective way of improving farm performance. We looked at fowls and the housing, and that's where we really exposed some challenges of housing that looked at, okay, there was retained cleanings, but it was feed space, it was the environment, it was an issue. We looked at foot baiting as opposed to treating every fowl with an antibiotic injection, and that worked well. Um, now, you, we're not removing antibiotics completely from that system because you can't make huge changes to housing, but there are simple things you can do. And again, around calf pneumonia, we looked at vaccination, and uh, there were some scour issues, there was oral antibiotics being used when they didn't need to be used, and we got a massive, a massive um, response over time to just focusing on the data, what the data showed us, then look at the farm where the usage was, and just one by one, picking off those areas. And then really, another important part of it, and working with your vet is, for these prescription medicines is treatment success. So whatever we are, whenever we are using antibiotics, they're using them correctly. We took out critically important antibiotics, we use more anti-inflammatories, and um, we focus on better and um, I suppose matching the infection to the treatment and looking at treatment success. And a lot of the pneumonia cases were getting repeat treatments because the length of treatments weren't long enough. And that's just an example of an area on beef farms where you can focus on. Equally so with dairy farms. If you look at the data, you look at calf health, pneumonia will be an issue, mastitis is something, and you, you've heard me talk about my other things program, it's really focused on one of, the, one of the drivers of that is antibiotic reduction. Again, lameness, particularly in dairy farms where a lot of the lameness is mechanical or functional, we replaced antibiotic treatments simply with blocks, better hoof treatments, uh, foot baiting, looking at the risk factors and more anti-inflammatories. And another one here for 30 cows was the transition management on dairy farms. So really, they, those areas can really make a difference to antibiotic usage. And a lot of the farms that I've seen and work with, they're not using huge amounts, the small incremental changes. One of the big ones was taking out the critically important antibiotics on all these farms. I think that can be done without the system 
falling apart. But it does need a renewed focus on prevention. I'll talk about that as the last step. So sheep, again, where I would have seen it was abortions, lameness, lambs, uh, and pneumonia. They were some just, just that, that's when we looked at yeah, antibiotic usage in sheep farms. Again, all these areas can be improved, animal health can be improved, and it can have a better, better performance, better um, impact on production and performance and profitability. And I suppose the final piece of this jigsaw, so if I look at mindset, legislation, data mining, better use of medicines, we do use them, is the, is, is the, is the, the kind of the icing on the cake, which is really looking at herd health planning, um, optimizing biology, really digging into the environment, asking why problems are happening, working with your vet in a, in a real more proactive manner, looking at nutrition, you know, so this is animal health it involves a disease, the environment, but nutrition is key as well, looking at nutrition the key times a year. And then I suppose a place that I, that I, that I find myself is in the training and education piece around all this, to, you know, to, to just making people aware of the importance of all these areas fitting together to make for more profitable, healthy farms and reducing our usage of antibiotics, sparing these precious resources. And um, I suppose one thing that I'm conscious of at the moment, that some of this, this long-term vision stuff um, isn't, isn't in, a, in front and center at the moment. Uh, it's, not, you know, it's not as vital as getting food out of farms, into our, into our processors and onto the shelves, which is a very valid point. But you know, post-COVID, there'll be a renewed focus, I feel, this is my own thoughts, on human health. And this has really got us all to think about human health. And I think for us, there's an opportunity um, for uh, about animal protein in our diets and how animal protein plays a key role uh, in good, sustainable, healthy diets. Now, how it's produced will come under focus, renewed focus. Of course, and I'm not gonna deal with it, but the environment's gonna play a big role in that. There's gonna be renewed value in medicines. We've all learning how important Good medicines are therapeutics working in human humans and how important it is to save those resources and there'll be a big investment in that. And also, I think the reality for, 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 for us post-COVID will be there be more discussions on zoonosis. And this is where we get uh, our diseases that are spread from animals to humans. It said 60% of human disease comes from animals. A lot of those are wild animal reservoirs. But we must be mindful of those discussions in our future and our farming systems. Healthier animals make for more successful uh, farming production profitability, but we're also risking reducing the risk of spread of disease within our farms and beyond. And I think there's opportunities for livestock farming in this to embrace this, because if we can reduce our antibiotic usage, if we can be more, and I've been talking about this now for probably 15 years, really take a preventative approach. We have an opportunity as technology develops uh, to mine more data, use data, uh, and, I, and I'm very excited about some of the technology, particularly wearable technology in cows, um, uh, wearable technology telling us about what cows want, uh, you know, picking up disease and sickness earlier, and then getting better treatment success. So for me, I think AMR, that this challenge isn't going away. 2022, this legislation is not going to change. We need to be more proactive. And I suppose my thought for today is be more eagle than ostrich. Happy safe farming.